Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to do a manual install of OpenStack. And this is gonna be a video in multiple parts that I'm gonna publish later on. And I will link to the playlist down below and also to the script I'm using today. Now there, you could set up a lot of things in the GUI, but the GUI is a little bit buggy when it comes to all these different uh, policies. So I'm gonna sh create stuff on the command line instead. So first off, we can do a uh, OpenStack flavor list. So we see what flavors we have. We don't have any flavors. So we will create a flavor. I will create a tiny flavor. So this flavor has uh, 212 uh, megabytes of RAM, one gigabyte of disk, and then one V CPU, so one CPU, and I will call it M1 Tiny. So that is one flavor. And when it has created it, if we run the OpenStack flavor list again, we will see that that is defined here. So now we can create something that is one flavor large. We had earlier created an image called Zeros. So let's go in here and see if we can uh, set up an instance with that flavor. So we will take server, create flavor, M1 tiny, image, zeros, and I will call this instance my instance. And if all things work together in a good way, so the placement server will figure out that we have a node that this can be run on and so on, it will figure out everything that is required in order to st start this. We see that the configuration at least was uh, sufficient, so it had created this job. So if we go back here and check on instances, we can see if it has been able to start this instance or if we have any errors. If everything is set up correctly, it should be in the building phase, and it is. So currently it's starting it up. We could also go into uh, here and do OpenStack server list. Why they call the instances servers uh, is a good question. So here we can see that it's active now, and so it's not building anymore. And here it's changed to active. So I can go into my instance. So the instance is running. I can look the, at the log files. And we can see here in the log file that this Cirrus uh, is now started. So let's see if we can get a console here if it can load it and we can log into it. And again, it's gonna be interesting with this keyboard, uh, as I don't have an American keyboard or whatever this is. So I need to figure out where, there we have that. And let's see. Uh, there, so that and that, okay. So zeros, there we go. So now we have an interface here, even if I do, uh, let me see here, that is not mapped. There we have a slash, slash etc OS release. We see that we are in the build roads and it's a build road system. If we do net or uname dash a, we can see that we're running Linux zeros and a specific version. So now we have an instance running in our OpenStack cluster, which is really interesting and really fun. So if we go back to instances again here, we will remove that instance. Uh, and if we look our, in our Ceph cluster here, we still only have images, one image so far saved in our cluster. That it hasn't created anything in VMs, which I think is a little bit interesting that that is not used uh, in any way. Um, and I haven't been able to get that to be used either. So if we delete this instance here, if the interface will allow us or else we will do it from the uh, command line. So there it's deleted and we go into volumes instead. Now I didn't uh, go into snapshot volumes. We should be able to create a new volume. I will call this volume one, the volume source we can set up. Uh, uh, 
will change it to image. We can choose the Cirrus image. Type is default, one, site, one gigabyte in size. The availability zone is Nova. We don't have any group. We will create that volume. Yep, it worked. So now it's creating the volume. This process will take a little while. So I'll get back to you when it's created. So now we can see that this volume is created here. It's available, it's one gigabyte in size and so on. And what we can do with this volume, if we want, we can check here and we should be able to launch an instance. And this could be a little bit finicky in this GUI. So I will do that on the command line later. And we can create a snapshot, snap one. Perhaps this will work, try that. Yeah, so it's created a snapshot, snap one. And there it, that's available. If we look here, we have already saved some data in uh, our volumes RBD in Ceph. And when we are, this will go up even more. So we will have saved more data in Ceph for the snapshot. So what's required will be saved there. So it's not the full one gigabyte that is saved here, but some of it. Uh, and the snapshot is the current version of that. If we go into the GUI again here, or the uh, command line, we can do, check here, um, open stack volume list. We can see the volumes that we have. So we should be able to see volume one there. Yeah, so volume one is available. And then I can create a backup, so volume one. So now we will use the backup service that is available. So we will create a backup on volume one. It tells us that we have that. And if I do a show on this backup ID, like this, we could give it a name also if you want. We see that we have a backup and it's available. And if we go into our Ceph config here, we can see that it's writing down the backup to our backups volume here. So we have been able to, in Ceph, use the backup part, use the image path and the volumes path. What these VM VMs is for, haven't figured that one out, haven't configured anything that will use that pool yet. Um, but it's, it could be that you have, when you are running stuff in the VM and create um, extra disks to the VM, that those are saved here. That could be one uh, possibility. So if we want, we can now create a volume. Well, we can see here that the backup is saved already. We can go in and create um, a new uh, instance from this volume so we called it volume one uh, so create the server create flavor type one tiny volume uh, volume one instance my instance so if we run through that we should get a new instance that is running that volume so it's not creating anything new it's just instantiating a volume that we have already created. So if we go back to the instance here, it should go a little bit faster to start that up. So we have an, an instance here, it is available, it has an IP address in our um, network and it's running at the moment. Let's remove that again and see if we can use the GUI here. That's the last thing I will attempt. It has been very finicky with all this policies and so on. So I have had problems with creating instances in the GUI before, but I will give it a new try um, and see if I can get it to actually do it. Uh, so let's see if we can delete this instance again or else we will not have any resources to start the instance on. So there it's deleted. Let's launch an instance. Yeah, we get a bunch of errors, so we can't do that. Um, so, this was what I wanted to show for you today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have an OpenStack uh, implementation running already, 
leave a comment in the comment section down below and especially if there is a specific service that you feel is more complicated and something that you can't really wrap your head around and you want me to dig deeper into that service then leave a comment about that in the comment section as well if you haven't subscribed yet please do that if you like this video give it a like share it with your friends and colleagues and i really hope to see you in the next video